Tarot! And in today's video, we're going to be talking about what are they saying about you versus what are they thinking about you. This one is going to get really interesting. I already I feel it in my fingers <laughs> because initially when I was going to do this video, I was going to just do what are they saying about you? Because it is interesting how people describe others and are they talking about you? And what's that like? Is it building you up? Is it putting you down? And, and obviously we're going to go into all the context of it. But then it hit me right before I was about to jump into this and started to pull the cards. And I thought, wait a minute, do I want to say saying or thinking? Because thinking, you know, people internalize stuff way different than how they express it. Sometimes they are the same and sometimes they are totally opposite. And in itself, the how it contradicts or is in harmony really gives greater context on how they are as a person, how they are associating with you as a person. In Again, it just depends on the scenario, positive, negative, and what it kind of all means in the greater picture. And you know that is a huge way we read cards over here is always context clues, always the subtext to the initial evidence we find in the, we find in the cards. So that whole concept is just going to be exciting and interesting to get into. And please let me know what you think in the comments below um, as you enjoy this reading, like and subscribe, all that good jazz, because I love hearing there is a then, an, a, we're talking about them and how they feel about you in those, in, in what they're saying out loud and what's internal. But I want to hear in for you then, what is that like with what you're saying about them and then versus thinking? And then how does that then add greater subtext to then that interaction between what they're experiencing independently from you, vice versa, you independent from them? And how it's like, it's one of those moments where it's like, we're all connected, even when we don't realize we are. Like I said, it branches into many subjects, which I think is so fun and cool and makes me feel like, yes, that's the right question to ask. <laughs> um, if you're interested in getting some extra content and supporting the channel, I have a Patreon. I am posting uh, two new videos over there. <laughs> what is the spiritual meaning of pooping? Yes, it was about time we got into it. <laughs> and a little bit of um, just in general uh, digestive is digestion issues. And then the second video I posted was a Reiki coding and guided meditation where we work on those digestion issues and digging into deeper of what's causing them. And you get to meet the spiritual, uh, the spirit of, I believe, digestion, which is really interesting. The whole, the whole thing was really deep and intense. After I did that session, like I was extremely light and airy and, and with all those coding sessions we go into how that looked and everybody in the community shares their experiences it's really interesting and fun i also posted over there a general halloween request board because i totally forgot it was october i was like enjoying the month you know very halloween-esque and it hit me i was like oh my god why am I not celebrating this with my people? <laughs> because last year we did, the, for the whole month, went into um, the spiritual meaning as well as just general information from the Akashic Records on a ton of different like cryptids and uh, myths and lores. And it, we went into like Mothman and Dogman and vampires it, and mermaids. It got really, really interesting. And I always take requests all year long at any point in time, people are allowed to request question uh, request questions, and I tr actively try to go through as many as I can on a regular basis. So I have some plans for rounding out this month for some videos, but I also want to hear, of course, any requests. Um, I can also answer these requests at any other point in time, like at any point in time we can talk about vampires, but it's there as a fun, extra, celebratory Halloween vibe. So get excited for that as the month rounds out. Anyways, so that's there if you're interested to go check it out. Um, really fun community. We're always growing and learning. They're very beautiful. Um, but back to our video we have going. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that. There's a bit of construction 
but I don't think you can hear that because every single time I ask if you guys can hear it, every time you say you can't hear it. So we're just going to continue on. <laughs> now, because this question as, the, as a whole is a bit stressful, you could argue. Maybe it's not to you. I hope it's not for you. But people usually are in anticipation, wondering what others think. I thought how appropriate to bring in some stress balls, so to speak. Um, so we got in group number one, <laughs> we've got the cube it's very cool i just want to show you this i am like obsessed with all of these there this is one this one's my favorite and no matter how you smush it it will return back to a cube i'm just giving it a second so that will inflate slowly as we come back to this this is group number one group number two a cute squishy little orange i do actually have a strawberry as well but for the sake of it not being you know like diversity in different like not all pink <laughs> i picked the orange or clementine please in the comments below what do you think orange or clementine and then we have this beautiful glitter do you see how beautiful it is really cool love this and then last but not least, we have the banana. Very fun. So that's group number one, two, three, and four. I'm going to give you a moment to either you can pick the stress ball that resonates with you. You can think about this other individual. I do recommend more the other individual and then pick the group you resonate with. And you might, by thinking about that other person, feel drawn to a particular object. Whatever it calls to, your intuition is not wrong. It works the way it naturally is going to work. I'm going to give you a moment to do that, and I'll be with you in one moment. All right, perfect. Okay, let's get started into all of this with group number one group number one let's get into looking at what they are saying versus what they are thinking about you by looking at the cards first we have in the what they're saying about you pile we've got the nine of pentacles upright Ooh, and another nine nine of wands in reverse versus this is what you're they're thinking about you Two of Cups in reverse and King of Swords in reverse. Interesting. Give me a moment to look at the subtext of all of this and consult my spirit guides and I'll be with you in one moment. Okay, this is, uh, this is interesting. Okay, because for sure, it's, a, it's interesting. There, there is some sense of link up similarities between what they're saying versus what they are thinking. But at the end of the day, it's like what they're showing face in a like putting out there to others seems more like they're being a tough guy a tough girl, tough guy, tough person, you know what I mean? And they are kind of being like, yeah, well, you know, like, but I got it figured out and like, you know, whatever. And then on the versus side, it comes off more as they're still saying a similar narrative, but it's much more in touch, um, emotional, wanting things to be different. So there's sort of like a different intent going on of what's outside versus inside, which again, when we go into context, that says a lot. So first over here, we've got three things going on in each card. So, so I'm just sharing this because as a fellow, you know, card reader, I love to talk about this stuff. I have a course if you're interested down below in the description, if you want to read tarot for yourself, but I get into it because we can read cards in so many different ways. So I'm re reading them by both looking at individual cards of individual meanings, but also then how the cards are interacting. So there's three meanings for each group. Um, in the Nine of Pentacles upright, <clears throat> we have 
an, uh, an individual who's really focused about money, interestingly enough. And I did double check because, you know, pentacles don't have to relate to money, but my spirit guide said, no, it's money. Um, the thing that's interesting here is they were not specific. Um, I can just double check real quickly. Yeah, they said it does matter how much money, um, like as in they want a lot of money, but they are concerned with how much money you earn. Um, this could be, we're keeping it kind of open-ended here because it is a general reading here. This could be like an insecurity thing. Um, yeah, even my spirit guide shaking their head now. Yeah, let's get more specific. I can already tell it's uh, more they want you to make a lot of money. Like that's important that that then is a factor, which is interesting because in your situation, I get more of a vibe. I mean, it is always, it could always be potentially, you know, they want to make a lot of money. They want you to make a lot of money. They want an equal in that kind of uh, position, but I get more of a vibe that they kind of want you to be the provider. And there's a part of them that already knows that they don't want to be the person that works as often. And so that's like a focus important thing in the situationship that they want from you. So that's something that they're kind of openly talking about of consideration, that they want it, that that's important to them, that's a focus. Maybe they're hoping you do make it. They like that, that you already make a lot. It, there's just a focus of wanting that from you and having and expressing that to others. But then in the nine of wands in reverse, they seem to already have their mate, mind made up about how they don't think it's going to work between the two of you, that they don't really feel like it's going to have a good ending like they're already aware of it but the thing that's interesting here is it's one thing to already know like maybe you're not compatible with someone or something like that that's not really the vibe they might kind of sell that idea to people around them when they express it but it's much stronger that it's almost like they're overcompensating like they're saying it a little too often repeating their stories a little too many times about how quote unquote yeah we're just it's just not gonna work out yeah, I just like, I just knew when they did this, like it just didn't, you know, I already knew it, what was going to long term, like they just keep saying it over and over to the point that, you know, it's a little bit like word vomit, like they can't stop. And maybe even people around them are kind of lovingly giving them a side eye of being like, yeah, we, we know you, you told us that. So they're definitely expressing about you kind of almost borderline a little bit obsessively. And then in the greater narrative of the two cards interacting, if we could look at these cards in general with the way these individuals, you know, she's over here distracted about her estate, the money over here, these individuals are distracted by the fight they're in. Overall, my spirit guide was also telling me the subtext of these cards is that they are concerned that you are too preoccupied with being independent, that this takes up most of your time. And this is another reason why they feel it's interesting. I don't get this vibe that they are like mad at you for in being an independent person. It's more like a neediness thing, I feel. And, and I want to be clear here. We're not hating on the neediness. There's nothing wrong with being someone who needs a lot. Um, you know what I mean? Like, if you want a lot of love and attention, why should you be deprived of that? I want to be clear about this here. We're not like mocking or making fun of them for this. But lovingly, they're like, wow, they really seem like they are, their every waking thought is like, what's the next thing that's going to fulfill me? I don't know how I'm going to fit in to that. And they're kind of expressing that to people being like, yeah, they're, they're doing, like, and, when, when, and we're talking about you here. They're going, they're thinking about you and thinking, wow, you know, they're really independent. Like when I was, you know, hoping maybe not to talk to them for a couple of days and hoping they would miss me, they had already made plans to go do this fun thing. And I, I wonder if, you know, that in the long term, knowing how they need like a lot of attention or would like a lot of attention from you. And I want to be clear here. I'm getting, let me just double check something with my spare guide. Yes. Okay. They're not needy with other people like every person they're into this is them very much being needy with you like they like you again 
this is the subtext, even though they already know it's not going to work out, and they're already expressing this to others, there's a part of them that likes you un- like so much, they want above average of your time and attention. You know what I mean? Now, I do want to be clear here. Um, we didn't like pull more cards for this. And we're not trying to get into like a greater narrative of describing who they are. But that, that that narrative does change on who they are. Because sometimes that's like a sweet, healthy thing of like you just really like someone and you want their attention. And sometimes those are traits of somebody who's, um, I don't know, I don't want to get too like, you know, it's not it's not a good thing to diagnose people. That's not like a positive thing to do. Um, but like if we get into a narcissist kind of situation, I think the term is when people love bomb, it's like, we don't know if it's heading in that direction. I don't really get that vibe. If that, you know, comforts you, I'll just be honest. I don't get that vibe. I get more of a healthier, normal, they're just into you vibe. Um, but nonetheless, it's like there's this subtext of they're trying to push you away already to their peers, but in a way that's like, mm, you still, for someone who doesn't want them around, you seem pretty focused on them. And there's almost a longing and sadness about it. Of It's like, but and again, I want to be clear, not an insecurity that they want to push you away first before you push them away. Not that, more just like logical of like, well, they seem really independent. I don't know how I would fit into their life, that kind of thing. Now, thinking is much more ooey-gooey. In the Two of Cups in reverse, we have somebody who, again, it's again a repetitive idea that we talked about over here, but in the Two of Cups in reverse, it is just very upfront. They are aware that there is not an even exchange going on, and they're aware it's an inconsistent uneven exchange of energies, emotions, like there's this awareness that they're like, if they're really ready to sit down and have a chat with you, you might not be available. But then the next moment you're available and they're like, oh no, I'm like, I'm not ready right now. I feel a little emotionally deprived or I got to go to work or something like that. And there's this longing to have an even exchange with you. They want to give you just as much and get just as much for you. There's a wanting of that, but seeing that it just keeps not lining up and that hurting them and then feeling sad because they'd like that to change, but kind of already in their heart knowing like that doesn't seem like it's going to be naturally working out. Almost like the universe, if you will, has ill timing for the two of you. Does that make sense? And then in the uh, King of Swords in reverse, this is really interesting. The other two meanings we get from the cards feel more like they're more focused on the individual in question. Remember, this card reading is about what they're saying about you, but it sort of pivots more about internally about them. However, I want to be clear, these thoughts are only happening in correlation to thinking about you. So in the King of Swords in reverse, when they think about you, they become extremely self-conscious if everyone can tell around them how much they're thinking about you. They're thinking about you a lot. And to the point that they feel like it's, you know, leaking over into their speech and how they're expressing them. So they're talking about how, you know, it's not going to work between the two of you. A little too much, a little too much focus on you, bringing up stories, awareness, oh yeah, I hope they call soon, blah, 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 that kind of vibe. And there's definitely an insecurity of it, and they're very in their head. But then this is very connected to the third and final concept we've got going on in these cards over here when the two cards interact. There is just in general a disconnect within them between their emotions and their thoughts. And I want to be clear about this. There's a lot of empathy we want to have for this person going on. Have you ever just felt like things were off? You would feel like maybe your emotions are delayed or you go to express something and it just feels like it came off in the wrong point or kind of comes off the wrong way and you start to make decisions and you're not quite sure about them. There's just a general offness. You know what I mean? Not as in, and this is somebody who's toxic and unhealthy. I'm just saying like, it's just sometimes you just don't line up with yourself. And then for specifically them, it's a combination of what they're logically trying to work out. And as you can see, they're really considering who you are, accepting who you are, not mad at who you are, but just 
considering it and then considering what they need, but then their emotions are also simultaneously wanting still more, and there's just this disarray that's kind of leaking out into other parts of their life. Now, something really important here I want you to take away from this card reading is when we interact with our environment, and at all times, subconsciously, we are. At all times, you are given off an aura, rays, things are, you know, intangible things are coming out of your body, and unintentionally, you are at all times manifesting and creating your world around you, right? And oftentimes, not every time, when you are looking at your world around you, it is reflecting where you're at mentally. So it would make sense for him, for someone who is feeling emotionally and intellectually uneven, not linked up, that they're around him with his interaction with not his, it could be his, her person, with this individual who has an interaction with you, that individual is also off. Things are not lining up. Things, you can feel the push-pull of it all. And I want to be clear, as toxic as it can sound to be kind of trying to have the ego feeling like they're shutting down the relationship, I just don't get like this nasty, gross vibe from them. They don't see it, feel like they're trying to get one on you. It's more of they're tr they can't admit to the people around them, I like them and I just think it's not going to work out because we're just not in the right time and right place. They want to like be like, oh, yeah, 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 it's, uh, I'm already like, it's okay, it's just, I don't think it's going to work out. Like, they're trying to like almost pre-heal, if that makes sense. So that's just something to consider why that's happening for them. And I'd love to hear, is this something, when it, you think of your own situation, or is this something you're also personally going through? Are you personally also emotionally and intellectually? Do you feel like your heart and your head are a little bit not aligned right now? Um, surprisingly, if you can believe it or not, just because you might attract this person in your life, that doesn't mean it correlates directly as a reflection of where you're at mentally. Sometimes it's like the universe sending you the idea that you only want to have a boundary and accept people who are able to 100% line up with you. And that we send sort of the universe sends uh, like general, I don't want to say misfits, but like uh, things that aren't working out so that you will make the decision to go no, yes, no, yes. And therefore tell the universe like I'm refining my palette of who comes into my life. Do you see what I'm saying? So I'd love to know your perspective in correlation to these cards. Um, and just in general what you think. Overall, they do seem like... Um, they do seem like a sweetie, a sweetie who's in their head, who's a, who's a romantic. So please let me know what you think in the comments below. I would love to know. Um, well, let me just double check one last thing with my steroids. Nope. Okay. Heavily romantic. Okay. I was just seeing if it could correlate into some other areas. Anyways, love to know what you think in the comments below. Please let me know. I love you so much. I look forward to reading them and seeing the next one. And let's get ready for group number two. Group number two. Let's look at what the cards have to say about what they are saying about you versus what they think about you. So first, we are starting off with, oh, hold on, my spirit guide's talking. This one's going to be thinking. Okay, we're changing it up with the Ace of Swords in reverse and the Eight of Pentacles in reverse. And then on our verses side, for what they're saying about you, we have Magician Upright and the Queen, yeah, Queen of Swords in reverse. Give me one moment to look at the cards, get some context, and I'll be with you in one moment. Mm. 
you're definitely very inspiring to them. I will say that as like an overall theme. Now, this is something I actually noticed in the last reading with the thinking pile. You're going to notice that um, a lot of their thoughts return more back to who like they are as a person in themselves from the inspiration of you. So it's like they're thinking about themselves in correlation to you due to you inspiring that. Um, but it will get more specific about you in more of the saying part, but all subtext and context clues here. So anyways, <clears throat> in the Ace of Swords in reverse, it talks about how there's this feeling where they, let me just double check, they have done it. Yes, okay, they have done it. There is this general feeling like they are planting a new perspective in the way they are expressing themselves, see the world. It's like you lit something in them and now their world's totally different. They are questioning and feel certain that they want to approach the way, like I just said, the way they're viewing the world, the way they're expressing themselves in a totally new way. It's like you've lit this in them and they've already made the concrete decision that they're heading in this new path. So it feels like you've already kind of forged something very specific in them as in, um, it's more than them being like, yeah, I'm just really happy. They make me happy. It's more like maybe you helped them um, stop and pause and, and not to be corny here. I'm just trying to think of an example, but, but you know, they, you made them want to get off their phone and spend more time in nature. And that gave them a totally different way of, uh, associating themselves with the idea of silence and creativity and what they value. And you're opening them up in how they can approach these things in everyday life and the greater picture they can see. And they love it and they're already like, I'm into it. It's almost this like, I'll just say lightly, and let me see if I can do express this the best I can. It's almost like you are summer camp for adults. And so adults, you know, love and have a good track record with whenever you randomly give them an opportunity to be silly, because most adults don't get an opportunity to be silly vast majority of the time compared to when you're a little kid and you just play tag. And it's sort of like you've inspired like a version of that in them. Because remember, summer camp's not always about being silly and playing tag. Sometimes it's like doing fun, creative projects just for the sake of doing it. Or having a deep discussion just for the sake of it. And very much that is what you've sort of lit within them. And they were like, oh, this is great. I'm down to go to summer camp. I'm down to do this. And that's very much the vibe going on here. And so they're very heavily thinking about how you've opened up their world in that kind of way. And they're like dedicated. They're doing it. In the Eight of Pentacles in reverse, though, while there is a very heavily complimentary expression they have of you, there is a mass, like, sort of a, a reaction that's also simultaneously very insecure. Now, there's something really important here, because when I was double checking with my spirit guide, and I was like, is there anything else? Like, you know, you want to add any other two cents? They pointed out two main points again, that they like, they were pointing them out, and they pointed it out again with specification. And this is important here. In the Eight of Pentacles in reverse, it talks about them being very concerned with how they express themselves to you. Like, how do they come across, um, you know, what did you think of them? What were, how was their actions and how did it affect you? And what did you think of that? So they're thinking of that in that concept. But then when we look at these two cards and how these two cards interact for a third meaning in this group, um, it, it talks about this idea of them really contemplating themselves and how they can express themselves to the few, to you as in the future. But I really was shown almost like this is more introspective and thinking about like the words and actions and feelings and in the in the in the interaction of these two my spirit guide was showing me almost like a puppet hand but it's like their own puppet hand and they are also simultaneously the puppet and they're thinking of how they will move themselves and position themselves and there's this idea of like how can they impress you how can they come off a certain way and i want to be clear this is not a manipulation thing let me just double check it's not a manipulation thing
Oh, it is a little bit of a manipulation thing. My spirit guide said there is a little bit of like wanting to present themselves in a certain way to you. Let me just ask though, greater context, should you be concerned? Is this like a negative scary thing and false advertising? Or is this like anybody who just hopes they come off in a cool way when they maybe don't feel cool? So let me just double check. Oh. Okay, I'm glad I asked because my spirit guides really go on one, as in, or on the like sinister manipulation. Are you sure? Let me just double check one more time. My spirit guide's like, I am absolutely sure. Okay, that's concerning. Sorry, glad we're asking questions here. Um, but this is really important then because my spirit guide, how do I say this? So when you communicate with any being from the spirit realm, they are very specific in how they talk. And a lot of the time people sort of like, um, you know, you hear what they're saying, but you might not always hear what they're saying. And they pick their words like very carefully, or if they stop you and make them make you listen to something they're repeating, or if they like highlight certain words they're saying, they're really trying to give you context clues. And they're really like pointing something out to you. And my spirit guide repeated again to me, I was like, what other information do they need to know? And they said, this represents they were thinking about the past, like they were worried about it. But then the context clues of these two together represents the future, that there is a sort of a sense of long lastingness they hope is there. It's so interesting that they said, my circuit said there was like a bit of a sinister vibe going on here because this is different. I'm going to ask a couple more questions before we get off of this. Like we're going to go over all the cards and then I'm going to ask a couple more questions of my spirit guide because I'm a little concerned for you with the context clues. Um, in the what, how they're expressing themselves, my spirit guide keeps saying future, future, future. Like there will be a future. My spirit guide is going off. They're like, be, be concerned. The future, the future. Okay, we're going to get into that in a moment. My spirit guide does not pop off like this very often. So we're listening. We're listening. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. They keep repeating it. Do you want me to ask those questions now or can I finish this card reading? Oh, they said finish the questions, but come talk to me. Okay. My spirit guide is like, they're not stressed because they're like an infinite immortal being, but they're stressed in the sense of being like, you come here and talk about this. So we're going to listen. So in the way that they express out loud though to other people about you, on one hand, we have the magician card and they really, and we already got a lot of this context, but they think you are the bee's knees. They are are lit up about you there we want to look at the way the cards position because that's very much the attitude it's sort of like you're in your own beautiful world creating things inspiring viewing worlds it's it's like you're your own antenna antenna lighthouse beacon it's all organically coming from you and you're a little bit consumed in that i want to be clear not in a way where they view you as you are in consumed by it not that way not like in a in a full of yourself way but as in like you are self-entertaining you are in it you know you can always have more coming from you of this resource of um, ingenuity and all the other things we express and they look at you sort of an idol I idealistic like um idolizing you kind of fashion the way they're kind of seeing you put up on a pedestal and marveling that you are like this, both expression, expressing it, but they get why you would be self-entertained. And they're like, wow, I want to like enter their world, so to speak. So very positive, very, um, uh, like you really, um, blew up their world in a positive way and inspired them. And you're kind of like one of a kind to them. So there's just this light and beacon around you heavily, but then Interestingly enough, in the Queen of Swords, they are a little concerned, just a little concerned, that sometimes your words cut a little bit too deep. The Queen of Swords in reverse, I want to give you context, can get a little bit into mean territory. But let's go deeper into context clues. Just because 
they think that it can get a little Queen of Swords in reverse doesn't mean it's actually Queen of Swords in reverse. Let me let me just double check with my spirit guide if it is or not. Yeah, I knew it. My spirit guide said, no, it's not. Let me explain why and what I mean by that. The Queen of Swords, when she's upright, she is, I love her. She's like one of my favorite like ladies. Like I, she's the girl I'd go to. You know what I mean? She's able to see things in a way more clearly than others in a very like she's the person that has both the insight and intuition of the high priestess but she's got the solution she already sees all the potential middleman stuff in between and is like this is a waste of time why am i going to wait until this other person realizes it for themselves why am i going to wait until i sort of like spoon feed them through this process i already have the answer i already have the solution i already know what's in the way let me just I'm going to just share it. I'm just going to be blunt and give you an honest reaction, breakdown, whatever. Now, the thing, though, is because she's so honest and blunt, sometimes people find this jarring. However, just because she's honest and blunt doesn't mean she's mean. Sometimes people find directness mean, but it's not actually criticizing mean nothing. In fact, it is an act of love that she does it. That's why the Queen of Swords is so great. She goes, I love you so much. I'm not going to waste your time because I value that much. I value your time. I'm not going to waste your energy, your money, your ener your emotions, your resources, nothing. Let's get down to brass tacks here's the information and she'll just tell you what she sees and so on and so forth and everything we were expressing before so with the, it being in reverse it's not that you're mean to this individual but i get and i get these moments really heavily my spirit guides showing me imagery wise and i'm just like picking up it feels like you'll be having fun and being creative and then you'll just turn to this individual and say something so deep and real they it's a little jarring for them it hit a little too close to home and it kind of intimidates them so again they're not sitting here telling everybody like they're so mean they're just like um it's a little much at times or oh i can't tell was that mean was that not it's like it's sort of like they are aware it goes too far and they're like processing that if that makes sense um they could be honestly well, let me just ask if they are straight up saying you're mean Okay, I'm glad I'm asking why. I'm being too gentle on them. My spirit guide's like, they are saying they are mean. That's so interesting that they're so speaking both highly of you and negatively. What a weird... That already's got nasty vibes to me, to be honest with you. Weird, 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 weird. Um, and the final thing we're going to talk about here, before we ask some more clues, questions, we're not done yet. But the final context clue we get from just the cards of how they're expressing about you and talking about you is they talk about how they are very concerned they will not be able to keep up with you. And there's this concern that they will not be impressive enough to you, that they will, that you'll get bored of them and stuff like that. And there's just a general, it's a lot, it, it's interesting, like, I, because we're getting such, like, my spirit is so warning of them i can't help but wonder if this is sort of a weird backhanded you know sometimes weirdly people will pre-set up a narrative to their social group around them so it makes them look like a certain way it will make them look like the good person or whatever you know that's kind of weirdly the subtext I'm wondering is going on here because when they are saying to other people, they're like, oh, they're so great. They're like the light of my life. They're so amazing. They said this, they did this. And people see the positive effect them viewing the world in a different way. But then at the same time, they're like, yeah, but they can be mean too. And like, yeah, I have a, I'm concerned they get bored and they'll get bored of me. It's like, what? It's a lot of like contradicting ideas. So let me just double check with my spirit guide real quick. Like, give me a second. My spirit guide said they need, you, like, as in you, the person watching this, needs to be really concerned about this person because they have a strong desire to control you. And it's very much like, almost like they can't, 
create that within themselves or like tap into that version of themselves like the magician as easily so it's like they want to utilize your traits within themselves by outwardly controlling you which is like not the vibe hold on let me just double check really are you sure because you gave me the king of um swords in the last one okay um they said that they are super dangerous they said very and my spirit guide's like that's all i'll say about it okay well they popped off let's just take a moment to appreciate spirit guides and how much they have our back oh my god my spirit guide was like i have something to say <laughs> um wow this is why we ask and get context clues. <laughs> um, I'm very curious what you think in the comments below from not only your perspective of them, how you talk about them, but what is the vibe like with them? Do you ever get conflicting vibes? I'm so curious. I am so curious to hear what you say in the comments below. Please, please, please. I'm, I'm squeezing. <laughs> I need to know. I need to know. So let me know in the comments below. I'm so pumped to read it. I'm very curious what's going on on your end. I love you guys so much. I'll see you in the next one. And let's get ready for group number three. Group number three. Let's look at the cards and find out what are they saying about you versus what are they thinking about you. Let's get into it. So first we've got in one group, oh my spirit guide speaking. This is gonna be our thinking group. Uh, Ace of Pentacles upright and the Emperor upright. And then in our, how they are expressing themselves about, or expressing about you to other people. We have a uh, queen of wands in reverse and eight of wands in reverse. Okay, give me one second to look into this. Look at all the details, consult my spirit guides, and I will be with you in one moment. Um, give me one more moment. Okay, um, this is an interesting one. Um, interestingly enough, there is very similar themes in how they are thinking and expressing themselves. The tone is very different. Um, it's weird. They're weirdly more... It's like there's subtext of vulnerability here that they're like not aware of. So they're not connecting to it on a thinking level. Like it doesn't feel, um, how do I say this? So what they're thinking internally isn't as vulnerable and they're not aware of being vulnerable as they are just openly expressing themselves and they're like everyone can tell like they are being vulnerable. They are naturally expressing themselves being vulnerable but they, it's like they're not aware of it. It's not like a manipulative thing. Yeah, my spirit guide's even agreeing with me, not at all. Like, they're not trying to appear vulnerable to people. They're just unaware of how they sound. So it sounds like there's a bit of a disconnect. And I gotta say, that seems like a general theme what's going on here. Um, I'm gonna be real with you as we get into this. This is gonna be both super insulting to you and super complimentary of you. They are definitely at odds with themselves, um, with how they are interacting with you i'm gonna be real we're just just hang on <laughs> so in the ace of pentacles and this is for remember this is for the thinking category this is for the saying category in the thinking category in the ace of pentacles upright they describe you as simple and at first my, I, my when my spirit guide said that i was like simple i was like do you mean like not smart and they said no 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 like plain like simple in expression they, that's how they view you that's how they think of you as i was like um that still sounds kind of insulting 
do you mean it in that way? Like, as in, is that sort of what they are, is it meant to be insulting in that kind of way? And my spirit guide was like, yes. So now I want to be clear here. They're not like thinking, I want to think insulting thoughts. Not at all. You'll understand the context of this in one more moment. Now, even though they quote unquote think you're so simple and plain, in the Emperor card, they have a very intense, strong, like, vibe. They want to dominate you. And they want to, and this is such a weird context, because I, I think this is weird to talk about other people in this kind of way, especially um, if this is your peer. Um, they want to be the one to, like, guide you and lead you. And they feel that they are the best one for that. There's a strong urge to do that with you and for you and to you. But then there is also this uh, sort of, like, a bit of a vibe of, like, I'm the one who can do it, And I can do it for them. And then the subtext of these cards interacting is they have no idea why they are so drawn to you. So it's sort of like the best way I can explain it is it's like looking at someone and being like, yeah, they are not really my type. That's definitely another subtext to that, the two cards interacting. They're not really my type. Yeah, they're kind of plain. And yet they just keep looking at you. And yet you just keep captivating them. So it's like they might think they have said opinion about you, but there's just something about you that's quote unquote drawing them in so much. And we are talking physically, energetically, because it's funny, they're expressing it in both like physical looking and general like way of living life that when we talk about the simple concept, and yet there is a magnetism in how they're still continuing to be drawn in, stare, be fascinated kind of thing. Um, like I said, very contradicting things going on, but hold on. <laughs> and then in the verses for the saying, you're going to hear so much more vulnerability. In the Eight of Wands, they are openly, they are just saying this out loud. It is coming out of their mouth and they are openly telling people that they are genuinely worried that you will drastically tear apart their life and change them forever. That they will be a totally different person from interacting with you. Like they feel this weird underlying narrative that they can't express that like you're going to mess up their world and not mess up as in like destroy it in a way of like you being unkind or, you know, ripping them apart. It's more like you force them to have to rethink things in a totally different way. You, you know, maybe they're dependent on you in a way they haven't been dependent on others. That kind of, and that, and to them, that's ripping apart their world. And there's just this really heavy awareness that they kind of can't escape sort of your pull. They don't want to, and they're aware the effect it's going to have in the long term. And like, they're just telling me, like, can you even imagine just casually being like, yeah, I'm seeing somebody and I think they're totally going to tear my world apart. <laughs> and then this is again, weird, contradictive, definitely weird energy like the emperor we're talking about here in the queen of wands in reverse. This is going to sound totally um, unhinged what I'm about to say, but the way my spirit guide described it is they said womanly charms, but remember we're doing a general reading here. So this boy, your boy charms, person charms, we're including everybody here. But it's almost like they think that these quote unquote charms of yours, like the natural kind of uh, the way we can like lure people in, attract them, um, you know, our general way of being in this kind of thing, you know, seduction, things like that. It's like that general part of you. And I want to be clear, it's not purely just only romantic. It's like a general way of life all leading off of that concept. But that general charm that we're talking about an attraction, it's like you don't know how to wield it. That's how they perceive it. And it's there. And they're just openly telling people like, yeah, they don't know what they're doing. They don't. But what's interesting in there, and again, this is what we talk about the vulnerability. It's like they're openly telling people. And re remember, the Queen of Wands is the most attractive, alluring, like magnetic quality of a person in all the cards. Like people are like, oh my God, I can't have enough of them. They're the person everybody's in love with. Do you know what I mean? And admires and all this positive things. So they're weirdly saying it's like they're in you, 
but you don't know it and you're not using it properly. And again, it's that weird energy of like, and I could teach them. It's, it's weird. It's weird. We're, we're, this is, people are weird. (laughs) So they have this going on. And then again, openly, openly, when we look at this context of these two cards interacting, interacting, the context is openly, they are telling people they are actively concerned how much they are not, they are growing more and more disinterested with everybody else around them. I get this weird vibe that from that context that my spirit guides kind of, I'm trying to make sure if they're giving me like a nod. Yes. Yeah. They said they're giving me a nod. Okay. I get this vibe from them that they are somebody who regularly like looks at other people and checks out other people and has multiple people they're interested in and is like openly like into multiple people at once kind of thing. And they are concerned that this person who they've quote unquote deemed simple and and not knowing how to really exude and express this magneticness that they could be expressing is just making them be obsessed they're drawn to you. They are concerned that they're losing all attraction for everybody else. They, they've never had this experience before. Let me just double check that with my spirit guide. My spirit guide said one time they had it before, but it was very short lived. Okay, so cool. We got that context. But the point is, it is so funny how in their head, while there is a similar mirroring, similar themes we're talking about in both, one is just totally unself-aware of what they're saying and then when they go to express thoughts and they're not hiding what they're thinking about you to other people so they're, they're very much trying to flow they're totally again unaware of how deeply vulnerable they go way farther in expression than in themselves in their mind which makes sense because of all the context clues that we are getting of how they're even viewing you so that makes only sense that they're like that but definitely a very interesting character because there's some cat uh, usually with like if if an emperor shows up i would be concerned for you yeah my spirit guide's giving me kind of like you got nothing to worry about it's it's this weird energy where they think they have an agenda, but like their agenda's not happening. Like they are going to be like at your feet, beck and call, totally experiencing a version of themselves they've never experienced with another person, wanting to do things for you they've never wanted to do for another person kind of concept. I mean, technically that once before, but that was short lived. But like there is just this interesting dynamic where you are bringing something out of them they don't expect and they can't understand why it is you bring it out of them because again they want to categorize you as something that it's like "Mm, are they though are they simple are they plain or are you getting to experience a new a new vibe something that you maybe couldn't find words for initially so i'm very curious i need to know please give me all the comment in the comments below because i'm reading the comments i need to know what are your in adjacent like what you think about them and what you tell other people about them have you told other people maybe you've not even noticed them Maybe they're nowhere on your mind. You're just like, uh, you're like, yeah, like, yeah, I know you're talking about, but like, yeah, I haven't really thought about it too deeply. I would believe that. I would believe this individual is losing it over you and you're just living your best life being like, yeah, I'm just living my quote unquote simple life. What do you want? (laughs) And I'm being facetious when I say that, but yeah, I'm really curious in contradiction what you're experiencing and feeling from them. So let me know in the comments below. I love you guys so much, and let's get ready for our final group, group number four. Group number four, let's look into what do they say versus what do they think of you? What are they telling people? What is this? What is that? Okay, sorry, we're focusing. (laughs) Okay, first in the first group, we've got the four of cups upright my spirit guide is saying this is going to be thinking and this is going to be saying so we've got in the first group in thinking we've got four cups upright two of swords upright in what they're expressing about you to other people ten of cups upright and six of swords in reverse give me one moment 
to look at the details of everything, consult my spirit guides, all the good jazz. But I just want to say this real quickly. This is like random. Look at what's in this. Look at this. Look at that. What do you think that is? That was like shaving cream. Anyways, this is just a random thought. <laughs> Anyways, give me one moment. Hmm. All right, we're going to be getting kind of dark in this one. Um, they definitely put on a different persona outwardly than they feel inwardly. And I want to be clear here. We're talking like their innermost subconscious. And the interesting thing here is this is not so much about being two-faced or lying or anything like that. It's much more, um, I mean, there is a certain level of like what they're comfortable expressing, but like there is truth in both sides. Like both things are true simultaneously. So I want you to remember that and keep that in mind. So first we're going to start off in what are they thinking about you? In the Four of Cups upright, they are thinking about needing a break from you. Um, I want to be clear here, specifically because they just feel not, like they can't live up to you. And it doesn't feel like live up to you as in um, what you're expecting of them. And they feel bombarded by that, which it's always okay to want from your partner more. And like, you know, that's not like, I want to be clear about that. But it's more that, we'll find more answers out in the second part of it. In the Two of Swords, they think that you are this beautiful, kind person. They really stress the loving, kind like sweet side of you very heavily very caring very loving person and the two cards in context together give a very sad dark narrative where they view themselves as this like infinite dark void it definitely heavily touches on a sad dark feeling internally in them nothing you're causing they just are aware it's within them and they just feel like they will not be giving, able to give you with their dark void the proper space for all your beautiful, sweet, kind flowers to grow. Think of all the, your kindness as little blossoming flowers like in a garden. And they f are concerned their void will swallow you whole. So the idea of wanting a break from you is more of a self-destructive thought than anything actually being like them being not into you having a problem with you it is much more of them being like my sadness is so overwhelming and i think they're so great i don't think i could possibly you know live up to what they need from me and what i wish i could offer them maybe my void my sadness my darkness in me is too big and I need to just sort of separate and be in it. Um, which I wouldn't say is necessarily the best choice. I will just put this out there. Please always reach out to people, talk to people, things like that. But it is still there. Um, then, then it's a totally different vibe via what they're expressing. Like, I don't feel like people know how dark it is inside them. Because in the Ten of Cups, we get just a super jovial, they're telling anyone and everyone that you are the light of their life. You have made it supremely better. You have made them so happy. They are very into you. You are, let me just double check one thing before I say it. My spirit guide said very true. They said they think of you as like the ideal person for them. There's just, and everyone's like, ah, 
Blank loves blank so much. There's just so much general positivity towards you. And then in the Six of Swords in reverse, they're openly telling everyone like, oh, yeah, blank saved me. They healed me. They made me feel so much better. I feel so, I feel like they made me a better version of myself. And then in the context clues of the two of them together, that what they're saying, people are not understanding the darker tone of what they're saying. So they'll tell people, I just don't think I could ever possibly sort of pay that person you back. I couldn't possibly ever pay them back for all they've done to me. They've just done so much for me. They've made my life so much substantially better. I just could never pay them back. And on an outside perspective, everyone's like, oh, you, you're so sweet. You love them so much. But they're almost darkly saying, I could never pay them back. Why can't I pay them back? I hate that I'll never be the person that can possibly return or be someone who is enough to return everything that they've been lovely and given me. I don't see a long-term future. Again, very self-destructive. I don't see a long-term future with them because that will always be on my mind and weighing on me. And I, it's almost like they love you so much that it's negative. Like they make it negative. And this is what I mean by the contradictive vibes. You might say, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said they were dark and sad, but then I changed their life. It's both. It's like they still have on a daily note, you're enriching it. They feel happy when they're with you. You've helped them do more, be more, reach for more. And yet there is this all-consuming, in-between-the-silent-moments dark void leering there. And instead of being like, oh, maybe, you know, we can work on it and in time I can grow and I can come to understand it. And, you know, you don't have to feel great all the time. It's just so many opposing, contradicting, simultaneous, extreme happy, extreme lows happening at the same time. So there is this sad, darker vibe of them already thinking, I'm having a great time now, but I don't know in the long term if I can be what they need me to be. And not so much that you're, again, not that you're expecting it from them, but they want to offer it to you. And again, they are making a unhealthy sort of position of viewing it that way. And it's almost like they're subconsciously telling people, but people are misinterpreting what they're saying. And it goes back to them just thinking like the loveliest, nicest things about you. I genuinely want to know what your thoughts are on this and your general interaction with them. Have you also picked up on these vibes? Because this sounds like something that definitely needs to be like discussed, worked on together, you know, not them making their own decisions independent of you and just pulling away at a moment's notice because it, I'll just say this, it feels like the darkness is becoming a little over consuming recently like it's becoming more prevalent so like not to end on a dark note but that's definitely something you should look into because it's really loving and flattering but that's important that feels like it they're feeling like they're getting lost in it and you know we don't want them to feel lost alone so please let me know anything in the comments below of your own personal, what you've thought of them and said about them and how that matches up. Have you noticed that already in them? Um, so on and so forth. I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. Please, please, please tell me. Um, I love you guys so much. And also tell me if you're comfortable. You don't have to tell me if you're not comfortable. I love you so much. Uh, see you in the next one. I can't wait to see you then. Goodbye.